Hi, welcome to Google Next and the session about how Booking.com uh, built a multi-cloud platform using Apigee and Anbos. My name is Nandan Sridhar. I'm a product manager with Google Cloud. I focus on Apigee Hybrid and the gateways in Apigee. And I will soon be joined by uh, Booking.com's engineering manager, Amir, and I'll introduce him uh, just before he's about to start. Now, before we learn about how Booking.com built a multi-cloud platform with Apigee and Anthos, I think it's good to start with a few fundamentals, right? Um, what is Apigee? What role does Apigee play in app modernization or building multi-cloud platforms? This is a picture many of you are familiar with, right? A three-tier architecture, starting with the very top, you have applications that consumers use, employees use, your customers use. They come in all shapes and sizes, and the general time it takes for these applications to change is measured in days. Uh, they change very frequently because the experiences through which your customers or your consumers experience your products changes very often. And then at the very bottom, you have your backend systems that uh, where your business data systems of record are stored. And here the changes are measured in years. Right? You don't change your backend systems very often. And API management really sits in the middle. It is that place where you're able to connect your consumers and your providers and govern them. So the word API management itself contains the word management in it. What that means is really you're governing how consumers access providers' data, which is APIs. And that is, that is the role that Apigee plays. And it plays a very important role in app modernization. If you look at what app modernization is, it takes many forms and factors. Today, we are going to talk about how app modernization through APIs are achieved. I'm sure all of you have read in theory how app modernization works, and in a few minutes, we're going to hear about how Emir actually did it at Booking.com, their journey over an 18-month period. But one of those ways of app modernization is through APIs. Now, the purpose of app modernization is to redesign or reconstruct some of your applications. You're modernizing it. But you want to do this without impacting customers or consumers from this, or your project never gets funded because it's too disruptive. One way to protect or insulate your consumers from this change is to wrap your backend systems with APIs. APIs will present a facade where you can improve, change, or move your backend systems without causing an impact to your consuming applications. And Apigee does precisely that. It acts as a facade to your backend layer or your API layer, so your consumers are really not sure about what uh, app modernization changes are being happening, but they can continue to experience those APIs without changes. But there's one other important fact when it comes to app modernization. Of course, there is this aspect about deconstructing monoliths into microservices, but then there is a second aspect where many enterprises are considering shifting workloads from on-prem to one or more cloud providers. And when such a thing happens, you want to manage your APIs over a multi-cloud um, infrastructure. You have some services running on-premises, you have some services running in two or more cloud providers. And Apigee Hybrid is exactly that sort of an API management product. It launched in November 2019, has since been adopted by customers such as Booking.com to manage their APIs spread over on-premises and cloud platforms. Now, all this is theory. We'll now listen to an actual practitioner of app modernization and how they achieved it and what their journey went to. It is my pleasure to introduce Emir to you guys. Uh, Emir Beganovich is an engineering manager with Booking.com. Uh, I first met Emir as they were just starting their API management platform. And it's been an amazing 18 month journey uh, that they've come through and I'd love to you, for you guys to hear that story as well. Uh, Emir oversees the Apigee infrastructure projects, uh, more like an SRE manager, uh, and we'll get to hear some of his experiences. Uh, so Emir, why don't you tell us about the Booking.com story? Thanks, Nana, for a great introduction. So Booking.com uh, is part of Booking Holdings portfolio and the biggest brand in the portfolio. We manage around 
on average, one and a half million room bookings per 24 hours. And we're also a tech company. We have more than one and a half thousand developers that are working daily on more than 1000 services. While we are known for our hotel and accommodation offerings, we're also going into more ambitious process of aiming for offering a connected trip. Connected trip for us means gathering all the travel experiences together and bonding them for our users. And you'll see how our move to hybrid cloud is helping us with our connected trip. When we were posed as a company with the challenge of going hybrid cloud and API first, we define our high level business objectives. First of all, the formation of an API platform with an API gateway as, at its core. API gateway, which would be used for API management and offer shared user experience for developers, but also for external consumers of this API platform throughout a consistent developer portal. This also meant for us that the APIs that are inside the API platform shouldn't pose an additional threat to security or underlying systems or data. Secondly, when we're decoupling and decomposing the monolith into microservices, we want to support our developers and allow them for gradual and transparent interaction of new services. Thirdly, because we're moving to the cloud, we want to avoid a fragmented environment and experience where different approaches are used and have a standard approach. So we wanted to simplify this adoption for our developers. By providing them common tools and libraries, we can really go with our motto of deploying once, publishing and routing anywhere. On the contrary of a popular belief of other API adopters and API consumers, we have not only our iOS and our Android app, but we also deal with different types of API consumers. The most important one for us is business critical use cases, which are partner supply tech and APIs. Their onboarding is usually slow because they've been there, uh, they've been our consumers for so long and they often have legacy systems on their side. So this means it's difficult to migrate from an API to another before we introduce versioning. Secondly, for app developers of booking.com, we have challenges in upgrades and versioning and also challenges in splitting from monolith code base to services, uh, service oriented architecture. Finally, as part of holdings company, we have internal consumption of APIs. That means service to service consumption or service to service consumption inside the portfolio of booking holding. When we were approaching the migration to the cloud using API gateway, we also laid out a technical landscape for our success. This meant splitting our cloud platform and approach into four layers with edge layer, API gateway layer, service mesh and APIs in, at its end. Edge layer meant for us that we wanted to have proper DNS points of presence and CDN that are accepting traffic for our users. The API gateway is the next step used mostly for service orchestration at this point and re request and response manipulation. Further sending this traffic forward to service mesh, which out of the box would provide our developers service discovery, service directory, and telemetry. Finally, the APIs that we wanted to have and in our future plan for multi-cloud platform would be running in Kubernetes. They would have limited scope and be deployed as RESTful or JSON APIs. So we decided that for this, we need API Gateway. The API Gateway research started at roughly the end of 2019. So we did our first contact and research and we ended up with Google working on Apigee hybrid ad adoption and initial design workshops. After we signed the contract, it took us roughly three months to actually start building the production ready infrastructure and getting it done. While in the meantime, our developers are working on migrations and starting to create their API proxies for their APIs. Once this was done, we got around three and a half billion requests per month for partner supply APIs because their APIs were migrated to a common and centralized API platform. Eventually, by the end of last year, we decided that we also need API gateway for a much more business critical traffic, which meant installing Apigee hybrid on-prem. And for this, we needed to utilize Anthos bare metal. Anthos bare metal allowed us to have very easy process from going from installation to being PCI certified, which took us another couple of months. After this whole 18 month journey, we can say that we have production ready and PCI ready platform for use for our developers. And I get over to you, Nathan. Thanks, Amir. So one of the critical points of app modernization is how to get developers to be more productive. Apigee provides with a set of tools to 
for developers to be productive for REST APIs. But what we have recognized in the last few years is that REST is but one style of APIs. Uh, GraphQL, gRPC, WebSockets, these are all popular standards for how APIs are built. And the problems of how to manage these APIs remain the same. Uh, developers still want a marketplace to discover these APIs. Developers want to implement common standards like logging, audit, analytics for these APIs. And the security teams want to implement basic auth and auth Z on these APIs. So what Appity has done over the last few years is to expand its portfolio for how to manage different styles of APIs. So Emir, do you mind telling us how you were able to take advantage of some of these features? Definitely. The most important feature of APG is allowing us to create a single facade for all of our APIs that we are splitting from the monolith code base. So this means for external customer, they might be seeing that they are using one single API over one domain, but in the backend, it means we're utilizing multiple backends for, for this whole API that is exposed on APG. Secondly, for all this migration, the, the topic of having a central and standardized way of authentication meant that we could go with implementing OAuth2 inside Apigee itself. And finally, as a platform provider and a team at booking.com, we can provide and reuse shared flows that Apigee provides us. In technical details, uh, we wanted to show how our hybrid cloud API management works in terms of infrastructure and traffic. Most importantly, we're running in our private cloud, so our on-prem deployment is using Anthos Bare Metal, but we're also running in GCP and AWS. Our traffic comes from different sources through a CDN network or our private cloud network, and then is taken by Apigee Hybrid, which further sends the traffic to our destination target APIs through Service Mesh. Service Mesh knows where to route this traffic, and it either ends up on bare metal servers, VMs, or Kubernetes services. The most important thing is that with this hybrid cloud API management, we still benefit from a management from central place, which is depicted on the right hand side. So the management plane is hosted by Google and allows us to have a common management plane wherever our runtime is running. Now the topic that comes very often in the industry for the last couple of years is companies struggling with either going with service mesh or API gateway. But we at booking.com think that they actually complement each other in their efforts of doing API management. For us, this means that we've tried to build a simple and yet very powerful service mesh a couple of years ago, which allows simple move in three steps from an idea to actual production ready and usable APIs. Developers define a service and service directory and write code, and then they can test, build it and deploy it. After which optionally they can expose it internally in our service mesh, or if it's the service which is intended for external use, then they can expose it through Apigee. Finally, this allows us to have multiple service endpoints into single APIs as bundles and then to reuse Apigee shared flows. We really wanted to narrow down amount of steps and also to keep it friction free. When it comes to friction free process, this means for us the development process and the SDLC means API proxy development can happen in the UI or source control, after which it's checked in and CI and CD pipelines actually do the API spec validation, linting, and integration tests. If the tests pass, code can be optionally deployed to production or a sandbox environment where it can be tested internally by our developers. What this means for us after 18 months journey is that we have around three and a half billion requests per month, including more than 50 API proxies on APG hybrid in five different environments that are used by different developers and teams at Booking. By what Nandan told me, it says it's the largest FPG hybrid deployment so far. So as a conclusion, uh, and something that other companies can take away, is benefits that we gained at Booking.com with app modernization using FPG hybrid. First of all, we feel that now it's easier to isolate code, which means our developers can have better ownership and can more easily deploy APIs. Those APIs can also be really small and domain driven behind API gateway. Because it's easier to publish APIs, our consumers can actually consume them easily. There's a single developer portal that allows easy registration and code examples. Of course, those developers can actually send code examples and test traffic in sandbox environment. 
This all means for us that when, when developers have an idea and deploy it and expose it as an API, it takes way less time for consumption of those APIs. Now, because we're moving from a monolith code base to smaller services, an important topic of having a centralized API gateway is really beneficial for us. And this means that we are implementing the same authentication and authorization models on the API gateway itself. This means all developers can reuse the shared standard flows from Apigee. Handing it over to you, Nandan. Thank you, Amir. Um, it's customary for, for such sessions to have a QA. and a uh, And so I will fill that gap and ask you some questions. Uh, first off, thank you so much for this very fascinating journey. I learned so much. Um, but as you did this journey, what are some of the exciting things that you're looking forward to? Uh, well, first of all, in a couple of next months, we're actually expecting to double our, double our API traffic, which means going to almost seven or eight billion API requests per month. And for this, we're going to move our traffic from our old APIs to our uh, Anthos bare metal set. I think this is exciting because it also shows us that in really small amount of time, we were able to get this up and running and certified and production ready. Another thing I would point out is the topic of developer portal, which is coming more and more often in our talks at booking.com. This means that we're thinking about splitting developer portal into two, and one would be an internal developer portal meant only for our developers and internal consumption inside booking portfolio. But also it means that we would have another one, which would be for only external use for our partners, but also for maybe some new APIs that are yet to come and maybe be monetized through Apigee. That's awesome. Um, now, a long journey like this could not have gone without some lessons learned. What were some of the lessons learned you can share with us and other practitioners, things that you would have done differently perhaps, or, or even reinforce and say, that's a great decision we did and you do it again. Definitely. So we started this journey end of 2019. And unfortunately, as the whole world, we were struck with the pandemic. One thing I wish we could do more often, if we would do it again, is have more design workshops with you and the, the entire Google.com uh, and GCP services and please. This for us meant we really enjoyed the sessions and we really had a lot of good insight and knowledge that we took from those sessions. But as an advice to new customers going with GCP and Apigee, for sure, invest as much time as you can and spend them with the Google folks. Thank you so much, Amir. That was a fascinating story. And thank you so much for sharing with us. And thank you all so much for attending Google Next and this session.